Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to program one of these cheap Baofeng radios that we all get off of Amazon because they're cheap, and they're plentiful, and they're everywhere, and they're cheap. Did I mention they're cheap? The reason why I want to bring this up now is because there has been a lot of chaos in the world recently, and what do you do if you need to call for help and you've got no electricity and you've got no cell phones and you've got no transportation to get you out of Dodge so you can get to where there's electricity and cell phone service? And this usually happens after there's a big storm like a hurricane or a tornado or something along those lines. Without electricity and without internet and without cell phones, you can't really go on YouTube and figure out how to program one of these things. So let me switch the camera around and we'll show you right away what we need to do. There is an app that you can get on Android, which is what this is, or on iPhone, and it is called Repeater book and I've already got it installed. It's a free application so I'm going to hit the open button to go in and I am currently in Roswell, New Mexico. If none of these town names look familiar to you make sure you've got the location thing turned on here at the top and you've enabled location services. So for example these are not anywhere near me and if I tried to program in any one of these they're not going to work. It says it's 12.9 miles away but it's 12.9 miles away from where I've got programmed into the software that I exist. So I'm going to go ahead and do location services. Over here there's this three bars that look kind of like a funnel. They're a filter. So I'm going to hit filter. Distance is 50 miles. That's that's kind of hopeful for a little radio like the Baofeng UV5R, but it's going to get you a little bit farther than 25. You may be able to hit a repeater that's 30 miles away. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 25. And I'm going to try the closest repeater that I can. I'm going to pick two meters. I'm going to pick 70 centimeters and I'm going to pick FM. These here are different wavelengths of transmission, and they're going to give you a little bit better chance. The 2 meter is going to give you a better chance of connecting than the 70 centimeter, but they both should be close enough that you'll want to try either one of them. FM is going to be your most likely chance to work, and that is one of the few modes that these cheap radios support. All this other stuff will have videos on the channel some other time that you can take a look at, but this is about programming in a repeater in an emergency. So what it's telling me is that as I'm sitting here in Roswell, New Mexico, the nearest repeater is the KJ5 UFO repeater. That's actually a pretty awesome call sign for Roswell. It is 2.9 miles away. It runs FM like we asked for. It is on 146.94 megahertz and it has a 0.6 megahertz negative offset. Those are all really just, you know, word salad number type things that don't terribly matter other than the fact that you need to know these things in order to program them into the radio. If you want to get more involved with what any of that stuff means, getting a ham radio license is probably something for you. If you already have a ham radio license, you already know what this stuff is, leave a helpful comment down below. But this is for people who are in an emergency or coming up on an emergency and just need to be prepared for the worst thing that might happen. Okay, with all of this stuff in hand, now we need to switch over to the radio and start doing our programming. I'm gonna turn this thing on. And it says that it's in channel mode, which means that it can go through program channels. I wanna put this into VFO mode. VFO stands for variable frequency, mode. frequency oscillator. VFO, variable frequency oscillator. And I want it in frequency mode because I need to type in a frequency. So if we look here, we're gonna start from the top down. 2 meters you don't need to worry about, 2M, 2 meters, that's the wavelength of the frequency. The next one is 146.94, that's the frequency you're going to listen on. So let's program that in. We just put it in frequency mode. Channel mode, frequency mode. And it says frequency mode when you're in it. And we type in 1, 1 4, 6, 9, 4. 146.940. The next one down says 146.340. That is the side that you transmit on to talk to the repeater. We're not going to type that in. I'm going to show you something to do with this offset of negative 6 megahertz. So we're going to go into menu. Menu. And we're going to scroll down until we see offset. And there is the offset. Offset frequency. If you press menu again, it says offset frequency and you start typing. Zero, 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 six, zero, zero. All right. Confirm. We've got that typed in. Now we need to go take a look at, see that negative symbol in front of the 0 0.6? That means it's a negative offset. Menu. And we want to go to the next option, 25 which says SFT-D, which is the offset direction or the shift direction or whatever SFT stands for, but I know it means direction. Menu. So we're gonna hit menu again to get in there. Frequency direction. Frequency direction, and this is negative, so we press the arrow key until there's a minus sign there. Confirm. And then we say menu again to save. Now we've got the 
receive frequency, the offset, the offset direction, which means that when we key up, it's going to transmit on the far side. So see how it says 146, 940 on the top number there? If I key up, and I'm allowed to do this because I have a license, KM9G testing, you see it said 146, 340, and that 146, 340 is that second number there. And then it didn't make a noise. And it is perfectly okay that it didn't give me a response back. First off, I'm sitting inside of a metal box. Let's take this thing outside and see if that works. So I live in an RV, and there is the big metal box I'm talking about. That is metal siding. So now let's try and key up outside and see if it makes any difference. No difference. Okay, so if you take a look, we have all of that stuff programmed in right. It is 2.9 miles, 3 miles away. We're in New Mexico, which everything is a clear line of sight. But look at this last line here. Updated 12-2-2022. This repeater is probably not in service, which is why it ain't answering. Which is why we get to do it again, so you get to see how I do it one more time. There's this NM5ML repeater that's also in Roswell. It's also 2.9 miles away. Let's do that one. You can see these numbers are all different. It's still 2 meters. It's a different receive frequency, it's a different transmit frequency, it's a positive offset direction, and there's this extra part down here, FM 100 hertz. And there's tons of extra information here that means something if you're a ham, but if you're not, what we care about is can we actually talk on that repeater? So let's start programming that in. So back to our radio. Channel mode. Frequency mode. Let's make sure that we're in frequency mode again. We just push the button until she says frequency mode, and the top frequency there is 147260. So I just type in... 147260. Zero. All right, so we've got 147,260. Now I need to do that offset because we don't type in that third number, that 147.86, because it'll do that for us automatically Thank when we program in the offset. Let's go to offset. Offset is 000.600, but we push offset menu. Frequency. Zero, 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 six, six, zero, zero, zero. And so that. 000.600 matches what it says on the screen there. Confirm. Menu to save. And then we have shift direction, offset direction, frequency direction, whatever it was that she called it. It's just called an offset. And this one is positive. Menu. Frequency direction. Frequency direction. There we go. So we set it to positive. So now you can see that plus sign there. Confirm. And then this one has that little bit of extra information. It says FM 100 hertz. That's what we call a privacy tone. So now we need to program that in. So it just says FM 100 hertz. And again, because I'm a ham, I know what this means. But it is a continuous, what do they call that? Continuous tone coded squelch system. It's actually CTCSS. Continuous tone coded squelch system, which basically means CTCSS. Don't talk to me unless I give you this passcode of 100 hertz. So I just went into the menu again. I pushed menu to start making changes. Now I'm pushing the up arrow to find that 100. And there she is, 100 hertz. Confirm. Okay. And I believe that's it. So now let's try it again. Again, I'm a licensed ham. I can do this during a non-emergency scenario. All right, and it came back. That's the, the foreign repeater, and the, those tones that you heard means that it comes, came back to me. KM9G, testing the NM5ML repeater. And sometimes what you'll get is you'll just get that air sound, that shh sound, and then the, we call it a kerchunk in the ham radio business. But some, but some repeaters are nice enough that they're going to reply back to you with some type of tone. Sometimes they might say the NM5ML repeater. All are welcome, or whatever the case may be. Um, you can see that this one here says it's updated 722-2021, but it still works. If you want to know what any of that stuff means, then getting a ham radio license is probably something for you. There is a link down below for the ham radio prep online school of how to get your ham radio license. Be sure to check it out.
there's probably a discount code down there also. If you don't have your ham radio license, it might be time to look up a local ham radio club in your area. There will be a link in the description where you can search for local ham radio clubs. If you reach out to a member of that club, they'll be able to show you how the radio works. And they might even talk to you about getting your license. It's not hard to get the license, but let them talk, let them verify that the radio works, let them test it out, let them, let them give you some information. Maybe they'll be the friendly type, maybe they won't, you never know but you want to get the radio tested before the emergency happens. Now that we have this thing all tested, there's one more thing you want to do, and that is to save it. Menu. Menu. And we go around until it says... Mem channel, and then it says 000. That is the first unused memory channel on your radio. So you just press menu. Memory channel. It says memory channel, and then... Receiving memory. And then you press menu again, and it says receiving memory, and now that is stored in channel zero. Channel mode. So now I can go into channel mode. One, zero. And on the bottom, you see how it says channel zero, zero, one? Two, one, zero. So now it says channel zero, zero, zero. And over here on the side, it gives you a channel number of zero as well. That'll do it. And either way, it'll work, but now it's saved as channel zero. Just remember the number that you saved it as. You can't give them names from the front panel of the radio. You can only give them names if you use a, a piece of software to program them. If you're new to ham radio, I went through that really quick. I went through it twice. And there's a lot of stuff in there that's just jargon. It's just word salad. And so what you want to do is take a look in the description down below this video, and there will be a step-by-step -step listing of instructions on what needs to happen in order to get this thing programmed in. You can't hurt these radios. And if you do hurt the radio for some strange reason, go into the menu, do a factory reset, start over again. It's not that big of a deal. And if you hurt it to a point where you can't even go in and do a factory reset, it's $17. Just grab another one, you know? So the message I'm trying to get across to you here is don't be afraid to program in, push buttons, do things. And if you find yourself in way over your head, Factory Reset is your friend. A ham in your neighborhood is your friend. Getting your ham radio license and your own call sign so you can play on radio before there's an emergency is a real big friend for your future safety in case of an emergency. So now you've got this whole thing programmed in, what do you actually do in the event of an emergency? There are people out there that are self-appointed ham radio police. They don't necessarily understand that when you're in an emergency, it's an emergency to you, even if it's not an emergency to them. So if you're in an area that just got ravaged by a storm or a tornado or something like that, you, you know the path of destruction of a tornado is actually relatively small compared to the footprint that a repeater can cover. You can be 20 miles away from the repeater and the person you're talking to can be an additional 20 miles away. I have not seen a tornado yet that crosses a 40 mile swath of land in its path. It might go 40 miles long, but it doesn't go 40 miles wide. So you're talking to them, they're sitting in their comfortable air conditioning, they're watching TV, they're talking to their you know, grandma on the phone, whatever the case may be, they're not in an emergency situation. You just lost your house and your father is buried under a pile of debris. You're in an emergency situation, you need help. The way the laws work, I am not your lawyer, so understand, you know, I'm in a ham shack here inside of an RV at a campsite. The way it boils down to is if there is no better means of communication, then you can use ham radio without a license. Better means of communication would be a working plain old telephone system or a cell phone. If you can pick up your cell phone and you can dial 911, call 911. If you can't get a cell phone signal or your landline telephone doesn't work and your ham radio does and you can key up the repeater, you can say, this is an emergency, my cell phone doesn't work, my father is trapped under a pile of debris from the tornado that just ravaged our area, I'm at address 123 Main Street, please send help as fast as possible. And you wanna say something really long like that because not everybody is going to be sitting by their radio just hoping that the radio might chirp off and somebody might say something who doesn't have a call sign in the event of an emergency so they can yell at you and tell you that you did it wrong. What they're probably going to do is ask you to repeat yourself. Somebody might complain and then you just say, look, my dad's trapped under a pile of debris. Please send help to 123 Main Street. Thank you very much. Please confirm that you're sending help. And if they don't, then you just keep calling and you keep ignoring them. Some people are like that, unfortunately. Don't let them get you down though. You need help. It's an emergency and your cell phone and your landline telephone don't work. That was kind of morbid. Hopefully you get your radio programmed and this sparks an interest in ham radio and a little bit of preparedness for you. There are plenty of other videos on this channel that I hope will help you out in your ham radio journey. I do a lot of radio reviews, show you how to program a lot of radios, I show how to set up different antennas, I show you how to build antennas, I show you how to connect to repeaters, all kinds of fun stuff. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring that bell for future notifications. In the meantime, there's a video right here I think you might enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.